So in this video, we're going to talk about actually how do we name our kinds. So before we start off, you should know that we have two types of alkynes. We have what we call an internal alkyne. And we have what we call terminal alkyne, essentially where the alkyne bond is uh, close to this is where the alkyne bond is close to a, a hydrogen or at the end right so this is called a terminal alkyne so how do we name them well the first step we want to do is as always identify the parent chain right and again this is simply just the longest continuous carbon chain that contains the carbon carbon triple bond the second thing you want to do is then identify and actually name the substituents Right. The third thing you want to do, and those are just obviously like any chlorine or bromine, etc. The third thing you want to do is give give each substituent a locant, or in other words, a number. Right. So substituent a number. Right. This is also called a locant. Now. In this, remember to give the carbon-carbon triple bond the lowest number possible. All right, so that is important. The fourth thing you want to do is obviously list the substituents in the alphabetical order. All right, so you want to list the substituents in alphabetical order and then the last thing you want to do is actually place the bond so you want to place you want to place the bond locant either just before the parent name or just before the ein suffix kind of the same thing so just before the parent name or just in other words or just before the ein suffix All right so these are the steps that we must take uh, to name our kinds so let's look at some examples try this one How would we name this molecule? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is start counting. And I'm going to count the longest continuous carbon chain that contains the alkyne. So I could start from here and say this is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now you might be asking, and this is actually the correct way to count this, but you might be asking, can I start from this end? And the idea is no, that would be incorrect because now if I start from this end, then this would be 7 becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now I'm given the alkyne bond 5 versus where I could give it 2. So the idea is that this way that we count it initial would be the correct way. So the parent in this case is going to be 7. Now, because this is an alkyne and not an alkane, Instead of saying heptane, we say heptine. Right? So this would be the parent would be heptine. Now remember that we also must give the alkyne, just like we did for an alkene, a placement. So on carbon 2 is actually where the alkyne shows up. So this would be 2 slash heptine. So that would be our parent. Our substituents. Well, on carbon 5, I'll see a methyl group. So I have 5 dash methyl. 
In carbon five, I also see another methyl group. So this is also five dash methyl. And on carbon six, I see a methyl group. So this is six dash methyl. So if we put together this name, uh, this becomes five comma five comma six. We put our methyl groups together. So this becomes tri because we have three. So this is trimethyl. Let me erase this. So this would be trimethyl dash two. Then we put our parent heptine. So this is the older way of naming. So this is the old way of naming. Uh, there's also a fancier way of naming. I, I'm particularly, I, I like the older way because it's just simpler, but you could also do the new version, which is still five slash five, I'm sorry, five comma five comma six slash or dash trimethyl dash hep. And between the hept, you actually put a two dash ion. Right? And so it's five, five, six trimethyl dash hep two ion. So this is the new new way of naming these stuff, right? But again, anyway, either of these ways are actually okay. All right, let's look at another one. What if we're given this one? How do we name this molecule? Well, again, I'm going to count and find the lowest uh, carbon chain. I'll uh, find the, the, the highest continuous carbon chain with the alkyne in it. Now remember that we must give our alkyne the lowest number possible. So starting from here should be rational. So this is one or let me write this in green. This is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know in this case, a parent would actually be an hexine, right? Specifically, it's on carbon one. So this would be one hexine, right? Hexane for six, but because it's an alkyne, we put hexine. Now for IUPAC reasons, we don't really write the one but I just write it there just to make sure you get it. We're not going to put it in our full name, but again, you should know that getting the habit of, of giving your alkyne a position. Going to the substituents, then on carbon three, I see a bromine group. So this is three dash bromo. And then on carbon four, I see a chlorine group. So this is four dash chloro, All right? So if we put the name together, uh, we then say this is three dash bromo because bromine or B comes before C in the alphabet dash four dash chloro hexine. Now remember, now look, if, if, if you see there's no dash, so I didn't put the one dash hexine, right? Because it's not necessary because it's a one. We only really do that for are numbers of two and upwards. So the parent just attaches directly onto the chloro. How about this one? How would you name this one? How do we name this molecule? Well, the first thing I'm going to do again is find the con longest continuous carbon chain. Now, bear in mind that I also want to give the alkyne the lowest number possible. So starting from the, the triple bond would make sense. So this is carbon number one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you also notice, I could actually count one, two, three, four, five, six. The problem with going this way is that we're not going to be able to name our substituents. So do, do it going to the left and you can see that you'll actually have problems naming your substituents. So the only way to actually do this problem is actually count to the right. All right. So if we continue, then we know that our parent 
in this case is hexane, but because we're dealing with an alkyne, it's an hexine. And on carbon one, we have the, the hexine, right? So this is hexine, and we know that on carbon one is the hexine location. And what are the substituents? On carbon four, we have a methyl group. So this is four dash methyl. And then on carbon five, we have a chlorine group. So this is five dash chloro. We also have on carbon three, this is one, two, three. So it's propane, it's a three carbon chain, but because it's now a substituent, we say it's propyl, right? So this is propyl. So we have three dash propyl, we have a four methyl group, and on carbon five, we have a chloro group. So, if we put the IUPAC name together, uh, bearing in mind our alphabet, uh, this becomes 5 dash chloro dash 4 dash methyl, M comes before P in the alphabet, dash 3 dash propyl dash 1 hexine. Or you could say this is dash hex one ion, right? So this is the IUPAC name for this molecule. Now again, if you leave out the one in the IUPAC name, um, it, it is assumed that the hexine will actually get carbon uh, carbon number one. Uh, so I mean, it's perfectly fine to leave out the one, but again, I would write it in just to make sure. And because I would write it in just to make sure. I'm going to rename this as dash one hexine, right? But again, like I said before, uh, you shouldn't really lose points if you leave out the one, right? But again, make sure for uh, numbers two, three, and above, you want to make sure you actually give the alkyne um, its location. But again, again, given the alkyne its location is important.